We're speaking this morning to Dr. Joel Lowe, our resident clinical psychologist. Uh, he's also the director at the Mind Psychological Services and Training. And today, we explore the psychology of being left at the altar. Oh, that mm. That is our topic this week, right, maybe, maybe Doc? Tough. So, in your experience, Doctor, what is the most common reason for someone, for a couple to call off their wedding? Hmm. That, that's, that's hard because like, there's a lot of reasons they could right but I think the most common ones especially when it's at the cups of the wedding I think it's cold feet like, right um, a wedding is a big commitment right it's not something that is like hey let's go have uh, burgers for, for dinner or something like that right it's a big commitment and especially in Malaysia because it's such a, a collectivistic kind of culture right when we marry someone we don't only marry that one person it's the entire family right yeah. and the whole process of planning a wedding and things like that can be quite overwhelming right and I think a lot of times that really stress tests a relationship and see how well you guys are able to handle it and all that kind of good stuff, right? Um, so I think that's probably one of the main reasons, like the cold feet, right? You know, after doing all this, is this the person that I want to spend my life with fighting this this kind of fires with, for example, moving forward? So that's one reason why people might uh, f- um, call off a wedding. Another good reason why people might call off a wedding is because, you know, they realize that, you know, after a while that... I don't want this, right? Mm. So, up to the point where you get engaged, it's still, you know, lovey-dovey, it's still like honeymoon period and all fun and games and things like that. But when you start talking about arranging a, a, a wedding, right, and then after that, getting married to someone, that's legit, that's like real intense kind of stuff, right? This is not just, I go on a date and then I go back home to my own room and I sleep. No, you're going to live together, you're going to like uh, spend your life together, right? And that can be very intense for a lot of people. And the whole face com- the idea of facing that la, or confronting that this scares a lot of people right and pe- that's why you hear stories about people with like uh, um, commitment, commitment issues. issues yes correct yeah, that but why so well. late <coughs> so close to the wedding mm. when shouldn't you already get cold feet when someone actually mentions wedding in the first place like uh, engagement or whatever it is it's I think it's the stress factor, la, right? So like for example when you're given an assignment to do, right, in college and university, when the the lecturer first says, Oh, you got assignment due in a, a month's time, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, three weeks into it, okay, so I didn't get a bit freaky, I'm gonna start freaking out a little bit. Three days before that, oh my god, it's like super intense and all that, right? I think that's what happens, like you know, when oh. you first talk about getting engaged, yeah, it's still okay, it's still palatable, right? But as you get closer and closer and closer, the reality of, reality of it really sinks in. And then the repercussions become really real as well. If I back out after I want to get after I get, we get married, for example, we sign the papers, and I back out then, it's like, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen, okay. right? Um, and that's why it gets more intensified closer to the date, like. So, right. is there any way that we can get get over this cold feet um, before the wedding? I think the first one is acknowledgement, right? realizing that I don't know if I want to do this, I don't know if I'm ready or not. right? Because if you don't realize it, then you're going to be working on autopilot. right? That means you don't know how you're going to react. You know, The last thing you want is to make that snap decision, the snap judgment and say, okay, that's it, I'm off and you run away. And you don't really ever process your thoughts and feelings. Because before you do anything that's major, an exam, getting married, um, you know, anything major, you're going to have doubts, you're going to have anxiety, which is a normal part of the process, yeah. right? Because that's just life. La. So if you're going to call off an entire wedding just because I'm scared, I'm nervous, that's a really bad reason because you might end up regretting it, right? Mm. So that's the first step, right? acknowledging that I'm scared, I'm shaking my boots, right? I don't know what to do. And when you acknowledge that, then you can have a conversation with your partner and whoever it is that you need to have a conversation with, like your best man or your maid of honor or whatever it is, right? To really process and hash uh, hash it out like, in that sense, like, right? talk through the emotions that you're going through, the thoughts that you have, the fears. And then once you've done that, then you can really decide, okay, you know, it's just nerves. I'm just, I'm just scared, right? But I really love this person and I want to spend my life with this person. Fantastic. Or you realize... I don't love this person, you know, I've been together with this person for 10 years or whatever it is, out of a sense of commitment. We dated so long, it's such a waste for me to, to end the relationship, so I'll just keep going on. Or, you know, her mom really loves me or her, my her, my dad really loves her or whatever it is, so I'll continue the relationship. Yeah. And it's all for the wrong reasons, right? So once you acknowledge it, then you can address it and then you can make a better decision out of it. La. Instead out of emotions, right? You never mm. want to do that. You don't wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm not getting married today, that's... Awful, right? Do women feel it more though? The pressure to because everyone likes them or whatever it is because it's usually the guy mm. asking, right? Who who proposes? Yeah, yeah, and then you're at the point where like, uh, uh, <laughs> if you're not sure, but then you're at the moment where you're saying, "I've been with this guy for so long. Yeah, I better say yes." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it because of that that they feel the pressure, and then at at the closer to the wedding, they go, "Wow, 
I mm. really don't like this guy. That's a really good question, and I think there might be some truth in it. You know, um, I think in our society as well, especially in Malaysia and Asian culture society, females do get a shot on the stick very often, lah. Right? Like you think about infidelity, for example, lah. Yeah. Right? Guys get a free pass quite often. It's like ah, that's a guy thing. Guys really do that. A lot of times, like, not okay. all the time, but a lot of times. Right, right? right. But when a female does that, right? Or let's say, for example, we're talking about weddings here. If a female re- decides that, hey, you know what? I don't love this guy. I love someone else, right? They got such a bad rap for it, right? And it's unfair like, in that sense. So I think a large part of that could be what you said, JD, that because there's so much pressure on them to 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 be the good wife, be yeah. the good girlfriend or whatever it is, that they are obligated to say yes mm. like, in that sense. There's a lot more pressure on them, like, right? right? So that could be definitely a reason as well um, that females feel it much more than uh, guys do like, in the long run. Like. Mm. Now, like, in cases of in fidelity let's mm. say right before the wedding yep. is it possible for the couple to work it out and still go ahead with the wedding mm-hmm. you know are they able to trust each other again yep. to make the marriage work long term yeah so that's the good news there so um i've seen enough Uh, not me personally, but in my team, lah, right? Enough uh, couple cases like pre-marriage or just right after the marriage or during the marriage itself, where there's infide- infidelity involved, that they are a lot of success stories. Success meaning that you know they the couple learns to forgive and forget and move on, lah, in that sense, lah. Okay, maybe not so much forget, but definitely forgive. Yeah. Right? And it becomes a, a chapter in their life, a part of this narrative in their life, lah, which is really important. I think couples when they start to brush things under the the rug, right? That and especially when we're talking about uh, cheating and stuff like that, it gets really toxic. Because it's just simmering there. It's never been addressed, and you know I resent you. You resent me. That kind of thing, right? So it's really bad for the relationship. Versus you guys come out and open and really talk about it and share about the experiences, cry together, scream together, get mad at each other, and all that kind of good stuff, right? And then it becomes, hey, it's a chapter in our life, right? And then you move on from there. A lot of couples succeed actually, right? So they go on to lead really good uh, couple lives together, lah, so to speak, lah, right? So that's actually that's the good news, lah. It can be resolved. It can be fixed, lah. But a lot of effort. A lot of tears, a lot of um, time and commitment put into it, like it can't be done, lah. In my mind, I'm thinking if someone cheats on me mm. right before our wedding, mm. like what makes you think that he won't cheat on you again later yeah. on? You know, yeah. in in your marriage when mm. there's children involved mm-hmm. and everything. So for you, it's done deal. If that happens, yeah, the, no, mm. the wedding's off, right? Yeah, right. Or until we resolve it, yeah, properly. Yeah. Okay. But the thing yeah. is that trust issue. It, mm. It's mm. going to be there forever. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, uh, in a lot of times, uh, in uh, like for couples who have gone through infidelity and all that, trust is definitely the crux of the matter, lah. Right? We need to rebuild that trust, lah. And honestly speaking, like what Bell said, that trust is not going to look the same anymore. It's not going to be um, unconditional, right? It's going to be conditional, at least for now, lah. Until that trust can be rebuilt, lah. And even then, also, it's not going to be the same, lah. In that sense, right? So, if let's say it happens just before the wedding, it's not. Un- I think it's a good idea for you to. Call not call off the wedding, but just delay the wedding until you can work through all these issues. Mm-hmm. Because the last thing you want is to get married. Because I've already paid the deposit and <laughs> everyone's invited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let's get married anyway. That's yeah. a horrible reason. That's and the most s- Asian thing to do, lah. Like. <laughs> Potentially, right? Really right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Don't waste the don't waste the booking. And don't know how to tell family <laughs> as yeah, well. Yeah, the shame right? and the, the face face saving and all that kind of things as well, lah. Like. So a better option would be to delay the wedding, right? Work through the issues. Make sure that you guys are committed and say, okay, I I think we can do this. We can do this together. And then after that. We can uh, continue on, lah, right? But to be fair, also sometimes people cheat, uh, both males and females, lah, for a lot of really odd reasons, lah, right? So lust is something that we know people cheat for, right? But sometimes people also cheat because it's self-sabotaging, right? Because let's say, for example, I really love this person, like absolutely adore her to bits, but the fact. The thought about marrying her scares me to no end, right? Mm. Because I might fail her, I might not do the right thing by him, for example. So I go and cheat, so I self sabotage, right? So that means I the relationship didn't end because I failed as a husband or a wife. The relationship ended because I cheated. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's not the same thing, right? The magnitude of it is different, right? So because I don't want to lose this person on my own accord, like how in yeah, not good I am, for example, mm. or inadequate I am, but because I made a bad choice, and by margins, lah, by that's in, uh, a little bit better, lah, in that sense. So if someone cheated because of that reason, then you know. Hypothetically, it could be more salvageable. I put it that way, like mm. that sense, like, right? Because sometimes we see in the movies and everything, right at the the day before, the night before, mm. then the bridesmaid and the groom or whatever, <laughs> hook up or whatever. <laughs> hook up or whatever <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, does I mean the last hurrah? Yeah, nah. right? maybe for some some re- sometimes maybe uh 
it's not probably the last hurrah lah, but maybe he was inebri- inebriated, mm. right? Mm, yeah, and then yeah. he made bad choices or whatever it is. Yeah. And he never cheated before. Yeah. Maybe yeah. this was just one, the one and only time. Mm, mm. Would Is it uh, like... To be honest, I've actually never heard of this self-sabotaging mm. kind of cheating mm, before right, until mm. you brought it up. Mm. And I'm thinking... That's a pretty interesting angle yeah, to look at yeah. it. It's, it's but if nobody, if the person has never cheated before, cheated on you before, let's just say, right, and this happened, would you take him back? I don't know. Why are you asking I me that? I don't know. Asking, just wondering. But but doctor, is it is it once bitten twice shy kind of? Let's say yeah, if you yeah. if you've had to cancel mm. one marriage mm. or one wedding previously, yep. would it be more difficult for you to get into? Another serious relationship uh, after that? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, it's it's just normal human reaction, lah. You know, you you touch a hot kettle. The next time you see a kettle, you're like, oh, okay, is it hot? Do I really mm-hmm. want to touch it again? It's very normal, right? And especially with something so massive like a wedding, like a marriage, for example, you got naturally naturally you're gonna be more hesitant. You're gonna be more careful in the next next time coming, like in that sense, right? Um, I've heard of stories before where where one 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 of the partner, one of the couple, sorry. Um, has been uh, left at the altar or the wedding's been called off for whatever reason, right? And they go to great lengths to ensure that the next time they get married, or the next potential to get married, for example, they play it down m- uh, significantly. means I don't want a big wedding, mm-hmm. I just want to sign papers mm-hmm. and be done with it because it's almost like I don't dare to be happy anymore mm-hmm. just in case something crappy happens again. So I, I pull back, really, really hold back, right? And it, it's sad lah, because it's born, it's done in, out of such a, a scary place, right? A fearful, negative, anxious, prov- uh, anxiety-provoking place, right? Um, but that's how people cope lah, sometimes, like, you know, like you know, that's what they do lah. So how do you get over this anxiety of falling in love again? <sighs> it's not easy, right? Um, I think time, as cliche as it is, time really is a big factor because you do need time to process, you need time to heal, to, to forgive yourself, right? It's like failing the exam, right? When you were kids last time, at the point of failing the exam, you're like, oh my God, uh, you know, it's the end of the world, I failed my SPM, right? That's it, I don't know what to do in my future. Fast forward 20 years later, you've got a job, you've got a family, it's like, mm, I feel like exam, it's fine, right? But you tell that to your <coughs> 17 year old self, cannot, right? Because at that time is the be all and end all of your life. Same goes relationships as well. Like, you know, when something ends, especially if it's a very long lasting, significant relationship for like 10, 15 years, yeah. it's going to take time, right? It's just natural that it takes time for you to heal, right? But I think it's important to just not lose hope, right? Ultimately, you are going to find someone who can fill in that blank, who can be your right partner, you know? And, and also look to the positives as well. Maybe it didn't uh, work out because that wasn't the right person for you, right? Mm. It's also really possible as well, right? And you just need it to wait until you find the right person and right, the right time and that's where you go after that. So okay. take time, be patient and let the process happen. Is there a specific timeline for someone to <laughs> grieve a broken long-term relationship? Uh, no, it's different from person to person, right? I know some people who bounce back like within like a couple of months to a year and mm. things like that. Obviously, if you're talking about days, then no, like, something's wrong, like, right? So it's the classic Hollywood rebound story kind of thing. Yeah. That's bad, right? Don't do that. But, you know, I've heard of stories where it's a couple of months to a year. I've got I've heard of stories where it's up to like five years, ten years, for example. There is no right, there's no equation, like, there's no rule of thumb. Like, it happens when it happens, like, you know? And it's like falling in love, like, right? As much as your friends try and match make you with people and all that, you know, you're never gonna fall for someone that's that's not right for you. Until it happens, it happens, like, and we just gotta let it happen. Like. I think impo- more importantly is that when it's about to happen, don't resist it. Like. Let it happen and see what happens after that. Like. Don't say I'm afraid. I don't want to do it again. You right. Know, I'm okay. af- you know, fearful and all that kind of things. Like. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but I think for a lot of people who have been in long term relationship, uh, relationships, mm. they don't know how to get back in there to look for someone. Yeah, for example, yeah. you've been somewhat with someone for 10 years mm, mm, and then you suddenly broke up with that person. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. are you going to go and find another person? Mm, right? Getting back into the dating yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting back into the scene, sort yeah. of. Like, it's not easy, is yeah, it? Yeah, and yeah. Especially nowadays with your, your, your Tinder and your Coffee Meets Bagel and things like that, right? It's, it's, a, it's challenging. It's crazy. Yeah, as I said, JD's giving me the funny Is that a right? new <laughs> app? <laughs> a, a, apparently, it's a less hook up version of Tinder. So, it's more <laughs> about like cof- literally going for coffees and watching movies and stuff like that. So Why it's, do you it's know that? I've got really young people in my okay, team, okay. right? So, not me. I'm happily married <laughs> with two kids. So, not me, right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, promise not even for research purposes for this. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, right. uh, but yeah it's very daunting definitely um, but like I said just now like, I think it's it's something that eventually if you like to happen then you need to allow it to happen right and 
don't I think what's what's also important is not to force the issue, right? Don't think that oh I've got a timeline here, like by the age of thirty five I need to be married and mm. have at least one kid or things like that. Don't because when you start arbitrary deadlines or that timelines or that, it's just gonna stress you out in- incredibly, right? And then the last thing you want is to go and settle with someone who you saw the kind of meets the criteria but not really, and then you regret it after that. You don't want to do that. I'll just allow the process to happen. Uh. And and as as fancy as the dating scene has become nowadays. If we think about it, relationships really start off with two people saying, "Hey, how are you? Let's go for a cup of coffee, get to know one another, and then we build from there, lah." Mm. There's no such thing. I mean, Hollywood always goes for that, like you know, the 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 what the instant falling in love kind of thing. You know, the whole chemistry. Love at first sight. Yeah, first sight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but that's like one out of what hundred maybe, right? right? So get to know someone, find out whether they're right match for you, and then allow that process to happen. And it's gonna take time. Don't be suckered into the idea that oh, my third date, I'm gonna find somebody new. That's crap, right? We just take time, let it happen, meet lots and lots of people, and find people that you actually enjoy and like to be around. Actually, with. that that I need to be married by a certain age thing mm, also mm-hmm. plays into yeah, the, yeah. I need to set a wedding. Yeah, I have yeah. like ladies yeah. have this book on. I want my wedding to be like this and everything. <laughs> day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then after yeah. that, uh, a guy comes along and hey, he fits kinda. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, get yeah. Settle. That's settle. what. Yeah. That's right? what doctors yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. settle for it. someone because yeah. you have that timeline mm-hmm. in your head that yeah. you have to be married by a certain age. Mm. That's a very interesting yeah. advice. Now, um, how do we overcome the anxiety, though, doctor, to having to go through? Let's say a broken engagement or mm, a, a, mm, a, you know left at the altar, especially when there's money involved, mm, you know, mm, mm, mm. and and families involved, yeah, yeah. and even worse if there's been assets purchased together. Mm, 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 what happens after the fact that when you have to deal with all these things? Uh, that's incredibly incredibly rough, right? <laughs> Because it's 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 so and it's it's bad on so many levels, like you know. Um, you haven't even finished processing on your own the fact that you know you've been uh, left at the altar or someone's ditched you basically, right? And then you got to deal with the really real life repercussions about the the cost of the wedding, the let's say you bought a house together or a honeymoon package or whatever it is, right? It's it's insane. It's it's just it's it's, it's, it's almost impossible for us to sit down and say this is how we deal with it, lah, because it's so crazy, right? My best advice would be to just knuckle down. Right, and just get everything done on the surface, like professional level. Just get it all out of the way, right, and then allow the processing processing to happen after the fact. Because I think if you do both at the same time, it's just going to crush you, right. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of times that's that's why I see seem to see happen as well. People will get all the the, the nitty gritty out of the way. You know, I settle the wedding, I settle the house, I sell it or whatever it is. Get it all done, and then after that, I've had some a moment of peace to myself. Then I can go and process, right? Grief. Then. Yeah, correct. It's not so. I was, it's a good point, but I was going to raise that up, right? It's not unlike you losing a, a loved one or family member. To, uh, I mean, they pass on, for example, right? A lot of times, when a loved one passes away, your immediate uh, need or Im- immediate requirement is to settle the burial, for example, the the processing of hospital and things mm-hmm. like that, getting the death cert and all that. And then after that, the green process can start, mm. right? Sometimes we just don't have the luxury of processing what we're going through at that moment, at that time. So I think that's probably my my best rule of thumb kind of thing. Get what you need done out of the way, finish, settle everything really. Then you can take time off and then really process. But that really needs to happen. That processing needs to happen. If you find yourself um, shoveling everything under the rug and say, hey, okay, that part of my life never happened uh, ever. I'm just going to ignore it. And I'm going to run away from it and just not think about it anymore. It's going to turn around and bite you in the posterior in the future, definitely, right? Because it's all this baggage that you have pent yeah. up, right? The next time someone proposes or the next time you someone talks about Getting married, you're gonna freak out because then suddenly all this baggage and history comes back again. It's not marrying this new person; it's marrying this person plus the fact that I got jilted before, I got mm. left at the altar, and then it's gonna come crashing again. Yeah. But as friends and family, mm. though, how can we help this person Ooh, who yeah. has just been <laughs> left at the altar? Yeah, what do you say? Should we help or should we just keep mm. quiet for a while? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, again, really good question. Again, it's going to change from person to person, right? You know how some people, when they go through a bad patch, they just want to be left alone. They just want to crawl into a, a, a cave somewhere and just be by themselves mm. for like a month or two, and then after that they come back again and they're okay. Some people they just need to like party it out and just go out for like a trip to Japan or something like that. I mean, obviously you can't now, but you know, just to work it out that way in yeah. that sense, right? Um, so I think it depends on the persons, the people that you're with, right? The the person who's affected, sorry, and and see what they need. 
But I think a general good rule of thumb is to be available but not force yourself down the throat, lah, right? Saying, hey, you know what? Anytime you need a, you want to go for a drink, go for a bite or go on a trip, let me know. We'll arrange or something, right? Um, but I won't bug you now. I'll let you do what you need to do. You need any help, come and get me, right? So you're available but you don't force yourself there. You let them say, okay, when you're ready, you come and find me, right? Then uh, then we can go and do whatever it is that you need to get back on your feet, lah. Is there anything right to say even I'm stumped right yeah. because again it's, ch- it's different from person to person right I've heard of stories before where um, this group of friends um, they really didn't like the partner right, right. <laughs> so when they we got called I, I know I'm laughing now but it's been a while already la. they actually say congratulations right we thought she was really really bad <laughs> oh, really yeah okay. and, and, and I can understand sort of kind of where it's coming from but dude they were dating for X number of years you can't just say congratulations yeah. that's just mean la, right mm-hmm. yeah Um, but for them, that's how they coped with it, and you know, this is what it is, lah. For them, lah, right? Um, so I think it really depends on the person you're working with, how your how your relationships are like, how your friendships are like, lah, and then you work from there, lah. Because if let's just say I'm available for you, and then we, let's just go and do stuff together mm. just to get your mind off things, mm. and then you go and do cycling or whatever it is, yeah. And that guy who had to break off his engagement or whatever mm. never brings up the fact that this happened mm. Mm. do you go so uh, about that thing that happened do you <laughs> say things like that you you want to at least once or twice just right. so that they know that the opportunity to speak about it is there right, right. but again you don't want to force it down the throats right? Right, right so you say hey you want to talk about it you know it, it, it was crazy it was insane I can only imagine how it's like for you I broke up with a girl who uh, let's say after dating for two weeks and I was devastated I can only imagine what happened to you for right. example right and And then again, back off, right? So you, it's like fishing, lah, right? You throw it out there, you wait, and then you dangle, and then nothing but you really back, and then you try again later. Mm. So you don't want to f- go jump down into the river and try and catch the fish. You're never going to get the fish, lah. It's not going to come to you in that sense, lah, right? right? So be available. Ask them, definitely ask them, but don't every day, like, hey, at nine o'clock, hey, what's up? You want to talk now? You want to talk now? Don't do that, lah, right? Give them the space. Once they're ready, then they'll come and approach you, lah. And maybe they don't even need to talk to you. They just need to process it on their own, or maybe they've seen a therapist outside, for example. And then we, as friends, we need to respect that, lah, and say, okay, that's what you. That's the kind of support you need from me then that's what I'll give you lah. that's okay lah. Mm. so earlier you, you you spoke about this example mm. uh, about how your f- your friends mm. didn't like the partner and <laughs> yeah. actually congratulated them yeah. when the wedding was called off right, right? right so is it in our power as friends and mm. family members mm. to point out to the couples mm. you know if they really are not compatible in mm. your eyes I- before their wedding <laughs> <laughs> I think if you were good friends and family, that sh- is a conversation you should have had way, way, way before, right? Not like two days before the wedding. Hey, you know what? I don't think he's right for you. Don't do that because <laughs> that's just mean, right? Mm. Um, so, just have that conversation with them, but do it earlier on, right? Yeah. So, like, even when they talk about, hey, you know, I want to, I want to propose to this girl. You know, that's when you have that conversation, right? Not just before the wedding, lah. Um, let's say you missed that boat and the window's gone and it's like closer to the wedding, you know. It's not something that I think would be helpful for the couple, right? They're already stressed out of their minds, right? And then the last thing they need is realizing that my entire band of girlfriends does not like that guy, right? And they're telling me to my face right now, I don't think you guys should get married. That's not going to help them, right? Does that mean then we let them blunder into a mistake? Yeah. Maybe, but that's not our decision to make. It's not for us to judge whether it's a mistake or not, right? Sometimes people really just need to make mistakes on their own to learn on their own, right? We cannot go in and govern and say, ah, this is right for you, that's right for you, don't do that, don't do that. No, we're not, who are, we're not their parents. And even if your parents, so who are we to say that or judge that for them like, in that sense? Like. So I don't think it's something that should be done so close to the wedding. You know, early on, okay, can. If you miss it, then, you know, let's just wait and see what happens. And be available to them like, for the fallout, if any. Like. Okay. Now, Doctor, it, this is a tough question, I know. Mm-hmm. But is there a way for us to find the one? <laughs> <laughs> Or is there a way for us to gauge if that person that we are with right, is right. the one? Yeah, no pressure, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a really hard question to ask because do we really ever know what the one is, lah? Right, yeah. Right. Um, like for example, you know, in high school, you find people who like uh, fall in love for the first time, first love, and all that. I say, yep, you're the one. I'm. I'm gonna get married with you. You know, we're gonna live forever together. And then, as as old and disillusioned adults as we are, we we look at them and say, "Hey, you know, do you really are you really sure that's that's who you're gonna be with together forever?" Like in that sense, right? 
Um, so to answer your question, Bell, I think the only way to know is to try and see. Right. Um, if it's someone who meets the criteria that you have in a partner, like commitment, for example, um, how you guys interact, the different love languages that you guys have, and on in your mind's eye, it really does fit all the the, the bills that you have, then go for it. Try it out and see. Ultimately, relationships should not be looked at as 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 be all and end all, right? Because I mean, think about it. There's like what four billion people, three billion people on this earth, for example. Are you telling me that? You're definitely gonna get it right on your first try, right? Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not warranting or, or encouraging divorce or anything, and I'm not right. But when you're dating someone and trying to figure out whether this person is right for you, the only way to figure out is to do, to know that is to try and see, right? And to learn and and their their nuances, learn their their styles, the way they love you, for example, how you love them, and whether it's right for them or not, right? And then seeing from there whether it's a good fit. There are also instances where this person might be the one for you, but in in the inverse, then you're not the ones for them. That can mm. also happen as well, right? Yeah. And we need to acknowledge that possibility that sometimes uh, the cliches are true. Like it does take two hands to clap, like, right? And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. There's this really good episode on uh, Black Mirror. Um, I'm not sure if you guys watched it. The one where couples are matched uh, through algorithms and, yeah, and yeah. numbers and yes. stuff like that. And yeah, then they oh try yeah. and date together and they have an expiry date as well. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic, right? Because it's such a good way... To, to highlight how we as a society see relationships now is like if I date someone or oh, I date someone you know that's it you know and it's so much pressure built into that either from society or in friends or even family members as well oh this girl's really nice we like her go get married with her and, you know and I want a grandson or grand granddaughter or whatever it is right mm. and there's so much built in pressure into that right but ultimately go into a relationship uh, and when you're looking for D1 know that you're trying to see whether it fits you and vice versa or not it's between the two of you once you can resolve that then we can talk about your aunties and uncles and your moms and dads and all that kind of things yeah. like we can resolve that one later lah, right? as we were hearing stories from from uh, you know from one of our interviewees mm. that they they have point system now for matchmaking. Like yeah, yeah. Oh my. Whether they look <laughs> really? they look at your horoscope and yeah. all that, wow. and then whether you match that person in terms of how many points you get. Wow. Like maximum is ten points. Well, that's new to me. Yeah. So <laughs> that is quite yeah. scary actually. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, it's yeah. calculated to that. That it's too exact. black and white for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Life, there's too many different shades of grey, and this one, because yeah. you might not. I love the fact that you might not be the right one for that, that person. person. Yeah. 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 So life, I mean, relationships is kind of like shoes. You, you may look great on the outside. Yeah, yeah. You try it on, and sometimes like oh, it just doesn't fit. Correct, anymore. correct, correct. Right? Okay. Interesting, uh, interesting metaphor, <laughs> JG. <laughs> now, uh, doctor, maybe we can get your advice. Yeah. Um, for someone who has just been through a bad breakup, yep. what advice would you give these people? Um, don't hide away from it. Right? Make sure you process it your own way, you know, whatever way it is. Right? Hopefully, it's not something destructive like alcohol and, and drugs or whatever it is. Right? But definitely process it. Um, if you have friends and family who are able to go through that ju- processing journey with you, then go for it. If not, then go look for a therapist because, like I said just now, this is not something you want to sweep under the rug. This isn't like, you know, I broke a glass or I smashed my phone, I can just sweep it under the rug, buy a new phone and then be done with it. Mm. It's not. This is something that's going to leave a big, big mark on your life, la, right? And being uh, left at the altar, for example, or after having a long relationship, go up, fizzle up and smoke like that, right? It's not something that goes away very easily, right? And think about it. Every other relationship from there on, it's going to be compared to or, or contrasted with what happened with you right now. Mm. And if you don't ever process it and understand that perhaps, let's say, for example, it's not your fault, it's really about them or it was just really genuinely a bad match or maybe it is for your fault, you, you cheated or whatever it is, right? You need to come to terms with that because if not, then that's going to color every, the way you see all the other future relationships that you have. And it's not going to be fair to your future partners in that sense like, because it's not their fault, it's the baggage is full, right? And then they, they are the ones that bear the brunt of it, mm. unfortunately, mm. right? So definitely the best advice I can give you is process it. Friends, family, on your own, that's fine as well. But if you can, find someone else to bounce ideas off because our minds are really horrible at like teasing apart ideas and <laughs> stuff like that. Like we can think about really fantastic stuff, but it gets into like a giant like mess like, after a while, right? A giant mush. Uh, so to speak to someone about it, if you can't speak to a friend and family, find a therapist, right? There are lots of therapists out there who can help you. And we're not there to tell you what's right or wrong and give you a timeline or anything like that. No, we're just there to help you process, really talk about what happened. You want to cry? Great. You want to scream? You want to shout? You want to break something? Great. Go for it. Do it, right? And after you've done all that, you've processed it, and then you can start talking about the healing process. La. You know, what can I do moving forward? La. 
How about for those who are about to get married? Yeah. Do you have any advice for them? Ah, uh, strap in and hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Just go for it. Uh, go with the flow. Honestly, I think that's actually not that's actually pretty good advice because if you've gotten to a point where you're about to get married, everything's settled, you've got plans and all in place, really, right? And and uh, okay, unless um, unless something really significant happens, lah, right? You know. Go for it. You know, I think sometimes the nerves are gonna be an issue. Definitely, it's it's understandable, uh, especially if you have like a b- giant massive wedding and you walk down the aisle of like a thousand people staring at you. For example, you don't know half of these people. It can be very unnerving for a lot of people, all right? So sometimes you just gotta bear down and say, okay, let's go do it, and know that you've got, and we're gonna do it together. La. I think find that strength together, and then that's how you face the world. La. And that's a good energy as well, because as you move forward in life. You, uh, husband and wife, or, or anywhere in between, that's how you live life. That's how you're gonna face the world and and conquer all the things that you guys are gonna encounter moving forward, right? Yeah. So go for sometimes it. I think the anticipation of the event is actually wo- exactly worse than the actual thing itself. Exactly, right? exactly. Like for my wife and I as well. Like we ha- we had a fairly big wedding, like because my 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 parents were had, had a lot of friends and stuff like that. So it was one of those weddings where I did literally didn't know like three quarter of the people that I have no right, idea. Right. It was not my wedding. It was like my parents' <laughs> wedding kind of thing, right? Um and I had that wedding too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. You I had 900 people at my wedding. Yeah, that's some crazy number. And I only probably knew three tables. <laughs> <laughs> my friends, right? <laughs> and I think the memories of that my wife and I have the most cherished the most is after the fact, right? When all the random guests have oh no random. Okay, I love you guys for coming. <laughs> um, but people that we're not too familiar with, right, have gone and we are left surrounded by loved ones, family members, friends who we've known forever. And when they've all gone, just me, my wife, in the the room after the fact, and just holding hands and thinking, hey, we're done. Mm. Right? With that crazy, now we get to start our crazy, right? Which was wonderful for us, like, and that's what I remember from from the wedding, like, that, that keeps in my mind anyway. Like. Well, actually, I think one thing that saved my my sanity yeah. before my wedding, my huge wedding, was just hiring a wedding planner. <laughs> <laughs> it helps, right? It yeah. helps. It helps. Yeah. Because Definitely. otherwise, you will be arguing about yeah. what to pick and what not. Mm, but mm, here, mm. you have someone else, yeah. a third decide party, yeah, yeah. to decide for you. Yeah. Flowers, ice sculpture. I don't care. Yeah. Man, right? <laughs> What was that pastel white, uh, cream <laughs> white, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But go with the flow. I love that. In, if you're Asian and you've paid for everything already, go with it. Yeah, <laughs> just you know, I, I think sometimes okay, not all the time, but sometimes the best uh, mantra you can have is, "What's the worst that can happen?" Lah, right? Yeah. You guys been together for a long time, and again, unless something really significant happens, what's the worst that can happen? Right? Just ride through it together, and let's see what happens at the end of the tunnel. Lah. All right. Thank you so Actually, much. One yeah. more thing. Yeah. The part about the infidelity and then working through it and then people getting back together mm. if they talk about it, right? Mm. At what point mm. after you get married and then you talk about stuff, right? At what point is it okay for one of the uh, people to go, so you remember the time when you cheated and everything? <laughs> That's never a good time, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. I think if you go into it with that kind of like, okay, I've got this in my my bag to pull out as a trump card anytime something crazy happens. That's never a good relationship. Like, Actually, right? I have one more question. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We, we've been talking a lot about people f- in long-term relationships yep. and mm. like in engagements and all that mm. but what about people who have just gotten together and they decided ah. yes we want to get married right, right, because right. we had one case where they only known each other for six months and oh, they wow. wanted to get married right, but right, in the right. end she decided it was not right, right because right. he cheated on her mm, mm, mm. so how about like should people take more time to get to know each other yeah. before mm. getting married mm. Ideally, I think that sh- is that's always the safest approach, lah. Because so there's something called we we know what the honeymoon period is, right? Um, and the honeymoon period actually there's a biological reason behind it, right? So ultimately, humans we all animals, lah, right? Um, and and the whole idea of animals is survival and procreation. That's the main goals that we have, right? So whenever uh two humans so so sounds so minimalist, but anyway, <laughs> when two humans get together, right? Um, our body actually re- re- reduces a lot of uh, hormones. Um, I can't remember what they call it right now, right? Um, but it's basically it's basically a hormone that says, "Hey, um, I want to be in love right now. I want to be with this person right now." And every time you see this person, if they're a good match with you, your body keeps releasing that hormone, lah, right? So oxytocin. I think so. Yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah. That's the the the, the love the, hormone. Love hormone. There yeah. we go. The heart hormone, right? Um, so. 
in the initial phases, right, we have a lot of that, right? A lot of uh, supply of that. So that's why every time we see our boyfriend or girlfriend in the start, it's like, oh, it's all love and passion and it's so exciting and all that. But after a while, that goes away, right? We're talking about probably six months to a year, that goes away. So that's why they, they, it's true what they say, it's a honeymoon period and after that it goes, it ends, right? So imagine if you get together with someone for three months, you're still in the honeymoon period and then you say, hey, let's go get married. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go elope and get married. Once you get married, you're still within that honeymoon period, right? But a year after that, when that ends and you realize, oh my God, this guy does not wash his dishes. That girl leaves <laughs> her underwear all over the floor and doesn't clean up after herself, right? Oh my God, I can't take that, right? And then once that oxytocin goes down, drops, which in, 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 eventually it would, then that harsh reality sinks in and go, oh no, I'm in trouble, right? So ideally, you know, a relationship should be going on for a little while before you make such a big plunge, lah, right? So maybe a year, maybe a couple of years in that sense. Um, if you guys are open to the idea, maybe even stay together for a little while, right? Like travel overseas, work overseas for a while, stay together for a while. Because that's also another good way to figure out the, the, the kind of patterns or the behaviors that we have and see whether we are a good fit or not lah, in that sense, lah, right? And if everything ticks, all the boxes are checked and all that, everything okay, then then yeah, let's start planning for the wedding. Lah. That way it's a safer approach, lah, 